Welcome back to the War Guru Overwhelm. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the winner of the Las Vegas Open. If you are unaware, the Las Vegas Open is one of the biggest Warhammer tournaments in the world. Uh, it just concluded over the past weekend, and uh, we got a lot of good data and a lot of good matches. And so I'm going to be taking a look at the winning list, so the person that won the overall tournament as well as the final match, and just kind of taking a look at his list, seeing what's uh, what's up about it. I was honestly a bit surprised to see that it was a Cities of Sigmar faction. Um, I knew that they were viable, but I didn't think that they were as strong as they are. But to be fair, the general who led this faction to victory is a very good player. So props to him and congratulations on your win. So without further ado, let's get started. The winner of this year's uh, Las Vegas Open tournament goes to Gavin Grigger. He ran Living Cities for Cities of Sigmar, and his list came in at 900, or excuse me, 1,960 points. For leaders, he has three. He has three units of Battleline and then two units of Coalition Stormcast. For the leaders, we have the Witch Hunter uh, Doralia Vendance, the Free Guild General, who is also the General's adjunct, and then you have a Sorceress who is the general. They have the command trait Master of Magic, which is a universal command trait from the um, core rulebook. It gives you rerolling one cast or unbind per hero phase. And the sorceress is all take, also taking the universal artifact, the Arcane Tome, to give her another cast. As for spells, the Iron Oak Skin is taken from the Living Cities lore, uh, and it is a really good spell that we'll talk to uh, in a second, once we get to the sorceress in specific. For Battleline, he took a massive blob of free guild crossbowmen, 10 dread spears, which is also the honored retinue of this army. If you're unaware, honored retinue is a rule for Cities of Sigmar that if that specific unit is near your general, you can you basically get a four up uh, damage pass off from the general to this unit. Also, to explain the general's adjunct ability for the free guild general, uh, it is a if the free guild general is near your general on a four up, you get an extra command point at the beginning of your uh, hero phase. For coalition units, we have four Dracothian guard fulminators and four storm drake riders with warblades. Uh, these guys are gonna be the hammer of the unit. They're gonna be where most of your punch comes from in uh, forward deploying. Uh, your free guild bowmen are gonna do a lot, but you're going to be relying a lot on these uh, Stormcast here. As for core battalions, you have Hunters of the Heartland and Battle Regiment. For miscellaneous information, he took the Inspired Triumph. Grand Strategy, he took Hold the Line. And it's taken place in the Mortal Realms, of course, because it's Living Cities. And that's the sub faction. First up, we're going to take a look at uh, Doralina Van Dens. A very interesting uh, Cities of Sigmar model. First off, it has a beautiful sculpt. You cannot go wrong with that classic Witch Hunter hat and a just mm, wonderful model. Uh, one of these days, I don't plan on starting uh, Cities of Sigmar, but I wouldn't mind painting up the model. It's beautiful. Uh, the stat lines for Van Dents is 5-inch move, 8 bravery, 5 wounds, and a 4-up save. Her melee profile is the Witch Hunter sword, 1-inch reach, 3 attacks, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend, one damage. The missile profile, which is oddly enough the one you're gonna be paying attention to, is the crossbow. It has 24 inch reach, one attack, threes to hit, threes to wound, two rend, two damage. Now what makes this so interesting? Well, it's one of her unique abilities that uh, when combined together, really pump up her damage output against specific targets. Uh, her crossbow does, or all of her attacks, I suppose, deal double damage when targeting wizards or demon units. Additionally, if she has not moved, um, she gets a plus one attack and plus one to hit with her crossbow. Additionally, she has a five up native ward and she can choose to shoot an endless spell to dispel them. So it's, it's a little odd. You basically target an endless spell in the shooting phase and roll two d6 to try and dispel it. But it's a way to get rid of some opponents and the spells without having to spend some spell slots. So overall, she is a very interesting model. So 
Van Dents is a good range nuisance unit, best targeting against wizards and demons. If you are targeting the right wizard unit or the right demon, you could potentially one-shot some heroes with the double damage. Uh, you would have to get both of your attacks through, but that's a potential 8 damage right there. So uh, if both your shots land and both of them get through, that can take out some lower, lower wound heroes. Um, Additionally, having the options to get rid of endless spells without spending spell slots is very valuable. Uh, she's also very cheap for uh, what she does. Next up is the Sorceress. This is one of the linchpins of this uh, army. They come in at 95 points, which is so cheap. Uh, they have a stat line of 6 inch move, 7 bravery, 5 wounds, and a 6 up save. Because of the Arcane Tome, this Sorceress gets two casts and one unbind. For the melee profile, it is nothing to write home about. You don't want your Sorceress in melee anyway. It's the Witch Staff, two inch reach, one attack, force to hit, threes to wound, one rend, d3 damage. For magic, she has an innate spell on the Word of Pain. It's an 18 inch reach, casting value seven. You pick one enemy within range and you deal d3 mortal wounds and you also give them a minus one to hit. The Iron Oak Skin is same range, same casting value, but you pick one frame the unit within range and you make them minus one to wound. So potentially with these two spells combined, you can do some damage to an enemy and give them minus one to hit, minus one to wound against one target if your uh, spells line up correctly, which isn't going to be too hard because you probably want to be targeting the things coming at you. But regardless, for command abilities, she has, you can pick one Darkling Coven unit wholly within 12, and that unit can run and charge or run and shoot. Darkling Covens are the old Dark Elf models, so Dread Spears, uh, Executioners, all that jazz. Uh, in this army, I don't see it being too, too useful, but it can still definitely uh, net you some movement with your Dread Spears if you want to do that. But for me, I think this army likes to play a little bit castly and cagey. Uh, she only has one unique ability where she can slay one Darkling Coven model within three inches and get a two up cast. So it makes her uh, spells a lot easier to get off. So Sorceress is really easy. Uh, she's just cheap magic. Her spells are good. Uh, she basically has an upcasted um, arcane bolt as well as a uh, good debuff spell to help protect your units, either the uh, Dread Spears or um, otherwise. Overall, wonderful pick. Uh, very, very efficient. In this army specifically, you're going to want to keep her kind of in the center of your uh, coalition of units. You want to keep her behind your uh, Dread Spears and somewhat near them to have that Mortal Wound pass off. Or It's just a damage pass off, not Mortal Wound. It, it's both Mortal and Regular Wounds. Um, and you're going to want your Free Guild uh, General near her as well, so you can potentially get those extra command points. Speaking of the Free Guild General, he comes in at 100 points, so only 5 points more than the Sorceress. He has a stat line of 5-inch move, 7 bravery, 5 wounds, and a 4-up save. He has a pretty alright uh, melee profile, these Vihander. 1-inch reach, 3 attacks, 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 2 rend, d3 damage. His command ability is very good, especially in this army that uh, won the Las Vegas Open. You give plus 1 to hit and wound for 3 free guild units wholly within 18 if they remain stationary. Uh, coincidentally enough, this army has exactly free, uh, three free guild units. Of course, the free guild general might not be in combat all the time, but you can still give him the plus one to hit and wound without uh, affecting your main archer units, if you wanted to. Free unique abilities, six is to hit with his Zweihander, deal one mortal wound in addition to regular damage. He also gives them a plus one bravery to free guild units wholly within 18. So the free guild general, really, this is here for that command ability. His command ability is wonderful when combined with the mass fire power of these uh, free guild crossbowmen that was brought in this list. It's definitely going to amp up their killing power and kind of mitigate their downfall of being a little on the weekend in terms of rend. But... Um, very powerful pick here. 
Next up is the Dread Spears. They come in at 90 points. Their stat line is 6 inch move, 6 bravery, 1 wound and a 4 up save. They have 1 melee profile, the Darkling Spear, 2 inch reach, 1 attack each, 2 attacks for the leader, 4 to hit, 4 to wound, no rend, 1 damage. Phoenix abilities, 1 in 10 can have a banner that gives plus 1 bravery, 1 in 10 can have a horn which gives plus 1 to run and charge, 6 to hit have minus 1 rend, and they get plus 1 to hit if more than 10 models are in the Dread Spear unit. Well, Dread Spears are your dirt cheap chaff unit. They are very cheap for what you get. Uh, they're there to screen and they're there to contest objectives with bodies. To maximize the efficiency of your Dread Spears, you really want them to take the brunt of the enemy offensive. Because they're on 25 millimeter bases, you can spread them out in one rank really thinly and not lose coherency. Uh, this gives you a little bit more leeway in terms of screening and keeping your uh, archers and your heroes in um, protection. Uh, they're also going to be useful to just kind of sit on objectives and keep them somewhat occupied. Next up are the Free Guild Crossbowmen. They come in at 105 points. Uh, they have a stat line of 5 inch move, 5 bravery, one wound and a six up save. They have a token melee profile, the dagger, one inch reach, one attack, fives to hit, fives to wound, no rend, one damage. The missile profile is the free guild crossbow, 24 inch reach, one attack, fours to hit, threes to wound, no rend, one damage. The leader in the unit gets uh, plus one to hit in the crossbow. They also have the banner for plus one bravery and they have the horn for plus one run and charge. Additionally, they get plus one attacks if they are not in combat, have 10 plus models, and have not moved. So, what do free guild crosswomen do? They are just overwhelming f uh, f ranged firepower. You're not going to get a lot of these shots through, and the lack of rend is really going to hurt, hurt them in a uh, save stacking meta. But 60 shots at threes and twos is so good you're just gonna drown your opponent in shots and dice uh, the one problem of the free guild crosswomen is they are a little inflexible and they have to be set up to be used efficiently um, not being able to move having more units in the blob and uh, not being in combat are all things that are going to kind of force you to play a specific way with these free guild uh, crossbowmen but they're still very good uh, to maximize their efficientness, you're going to want to keep them within range of that free guild general to really get the most out of them. The command ability really makes or breaks them here, because no rend is killer. So you want to get as many of those uh, 60 shots out as you can. Before we move on to our last two units, I'd like to give a special thanks to our Patreon supporters. A special thanks to Nick Hoff, the Spirit of Dirthu tier supporter. You guys help me uh, maintain my motivation to keep making these videos and grow the community. And it's really awesome to see that you guys enjoy my content enough to be a Patreon supporter. So if you are interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, there will be a link in the description, as well as a link to my Discord channel. I'll, I'd like to see you there. Next up are the Dracothian Guard. The list that won the Las Vegas Open took the Fulminators, which have the Glaive option. But there are many other weapon options that you can build them as, and they all have a specific niche. But I personally think the Glaive is one of the better ones, if not the best one, out of all the Dracothian Guard. They have a good stat line of 10 move, 7 bravery, 6 wounds, and a 3-up save. They have 2 melee profiles, claws and fangs, 1-inch reach, 3 attacks, 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 2 rend, 2 damage, and then the Glaives, 1-inch reach, 5 attacks, 3s to hit, 3s to wound, 2 rend, 1 damage. They have a missile profile, the Storm Blast, 12 inch reach, four, uh, in a 4 up, the target takes d3 mortal wounds. Uh, be aware that this is for each individual dragon, or Dracothian, excuse me. And then the only neat, unique ability they have is the Glaives have damage 3 if they make a charge. So the Dracothian Guard Fulminators are your go to Devastating Shock Cavalry. They are there to run over your enemy. 
They hurt, and they are going to be where the majority of your damage comes from alongside Storm Drake Riders. Uh, because the list took so, uh, a fair amount of them, at least for a, um, a City of the Sigmar list, I assume, the damage output from the Mortal Wounds and just the damage from these guys alone is going to be a lot of um, where your hammer is going to come from. These guys will carry you through a lot of it if you just use them correctly with movement. Uh, luckily Living Cities really helps you do this because they can come in from the board edge giving you lots of room to pick your targets and pick your engagements properly. Remember once your uh, Dracothian Guard and your Stormdrake Guard are down you're gonna lose a lot of your fighting power so just be careful with them. They are tanky but they are not invincible. So uh, use them with a little bit of caution or know when to throw them in is going to be the big part of the game. Last but not least is the infamous Storm Drake Guard. Uh, they have a 12 inch move, 8 bravery, 9, nine wounds, and a 3 up save. The list that won the tournament took the Warblades, not the Lances. The Warblade has 1 inch reach, 6 attacks, 7 for the leader, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, 1 rend, 1 damage. The Fangs and Talons are the mount attacks, 3 inch reach, 4 attacks, 3's to hit, 3's to wound, 2 rend, 2 damage, and then the very intense missile profile, Flame Stream, 12 inch reach, you roll a dice on a 1 to 2, nothing happens, 3 to 4, D6, or D3, on a 5 to 6, D6, mortal wounds. For unique abilities, they have Fly, Lances have rend 2, damage 2 if they make a charge, they have an innate 4 up spell ward, and after this unit attacks, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch and you can roll a dice. If it is greater than the wound characteristic, one model from that unit is slain. Additionally, they have a once per battle uh, movement in the hero phase and on a two up, they can immediately charge. So, Score and Drake Guard are intensely terrifying. They do so much damage, mortal wounds and otherwise, they have so much damage and they have great movement potential. Uh, in this particular setting, I think the Lance will do the Stormdrake Guard just fine, as well as the Blade. Personally, I think the Lance, I would take the Lance just because the Rend really helps. Um, but personal preference, I didn't win a Las Vegas Open. So um, regardless though, the Stormdrake Guard are, I'm not surprised to see them here. In fact, I'm a little surprised I didn't see more of them in the list or in the winning list in particular. It's a little bit uh, interesting to see that someone was able to run a not uh, Stormcast Eternals list without a Dragon Spam list. So it definitely shows you that a good general and a good optimized army can take home the gold if they really wanted to. And that is a look at the winning uh, list of the Las Vegas Open Age of Sigmar tournament. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing. This has been the Wargrove of Well, and I'll talk to you guys next time.